It's game day in Baton Rouge, and we're here live once again at the Mansion Building patio overlooking Victory Hill. We'll take a look back at the Tigers' loss to Alabama and look ahead to tonight's matchup against the Arkansas Razorbacks. We'll also be joined live on the set by LSU baseball head coach Paul Maneri. Don't go anywhere. The Tiger TV game day show starts right now. Tiger TV game day show of the semester. We're here live at the Manship Building patio overlooking Victory Hill getting set for the battle for the Golden Boot tonight in Death Valley. Right. LSU in Arkansas. I'm Johnny Lombardi joining me again. To my left, Mr. Taylor Threat, and to my right, the Raging Cajun, Mr. Mitch Rabelais. Guys, it's great to have uh, football back in Baton Rouge again. Two of these last three games are going to be in Death Valley. It should be a great finish. Absolutely, it should be. You know, looking forward from last week, it's the question is, can LSU rebound? And with this home crowd behind him at night on national TV in Tiger Stadium, it's an atmosphere that you wait all season for. You know, LSU football is like Mardi Gras and the Super Bowl combined, so we've got it all going on today. Exactly. You summed it up, Mitch. Everyone's out here getting ready for the Arkansas game. Uh, should be a great performance from the Tigers bouncing back, and we'll see how it goes. LSU with the loss last week against Bama, looking to move forward from that this week against Arkansas. But to start things off, Tiger TV Game Day Show producer Amanda Luskin gives us a preview of what to expect tonight in Death Valley. With redemption and the Golden Boot on the line, LSU looks to get back to their winning ways against Arkansas on Saturday. Well, you know, we didn't go out there and execute by any means the best of our ability. Um, you know, going into the game, we just wanted to have, you know, somewhat balance. After their 30-16 to loss to Alabama, the Tigers dropped from second in the college football playoff rankings to ninth. The Tigers do not want their performance against Alabama to define their season. We're still very much in it. Uh, you just don't can tell, and you, know, you can look at it from any. You can look at it from the conference race. You can look at it from the Western Division. You can look at it from um, the national implications. You just don't know. You just keep your head down, fight like hell, and uh, see where we might end up. Leonard Fournette could only muster 31 yards against the dominant Alabama defense. His teammates are confident in his abilities and believe he can turn it around against the Razorbacks. Last season in Fayetteville. Fournette ran for only nine yards on five carries, while the Tigers were shut out 17 to nothing. It's really tough. Uh, I think this year we have to make sure, you know, the leaders in the football team that it doesn't happen again. Uh, you know, this is a team that's coming in here and, you know, like I said, trying to get a win. Smash ball, smash mouth football team. We have a 24 hour rule. We got to move past that. Um, you know, of course it was difficult, very, uh, you know, disappointing, but we got to move on. This is a great fo uh, football team. And, we got prepared for that, and we got to make sure that what happened last year is not going to happen again. LSU is ready to turn the rivalry around and bring the Golden Boot back to Baton Rouge. For Tiger TV, I'm Amanda Luskin. Looking back at last week's loss in Bryant Denny Stadium against Alabama, the Tigers entered that game ranked second in the uh, first college football playoff rankings of the season, but after the 30 16 loss, fell all the way to number nine. Tuesday, it was announced that they are now ninth in the nation, and even though they had such a drastic change in their rankings, the players know that they can't let that number nine get in their heads too much as they have a lot to look forward to these next three games. Yeah, it was definitely a tough loss for us. We played a really good Alabama team, always a big rivalry game, but at the end of the day, we know how much we have to play for, and, you know, the attitude around this team um, has been, you know, very positive today. You know, we, we knew we have, we still know we have so much more to play for. Tigers were a favorite all season long to make it into the college football playoff, but now with the loss falling on the outside looking in, how much is this new ranking going to help or hurt LSU going forward? You know, they don't make it easy on themselves going to nine, but it's still possible. They have to win out, but they're in the top ten. So it is still incredibly possible for them to make the college football playoff. I think that they will make the playoff. That being said, it's not going to be easy for them. Yeah, I think uh, they were going to drop back, obviously, but I think not dropping out of the top ten actually helps them. They're still in the top ten. The only two lo one loss teams ahead of them, I think, are Notre Dame and Stanford. But they have to win out. Nothing matters if LSU doesn't win out. 
A big reason the LC offense couldn't get it going in Tuscaloosa was because of Leonard Fournette being held to just 31 yards rushing against the Tide. He had averaged previously 158 yards per game going into Bryant Day Stadium. He only managed to pick up 31 against the Tide. Alabama's rush defense, one of the best in the country. Tiger showing that it needs to be successful sometimes without Fournette carrying the load. It's, it's preparation. You know, uh, everything. I know from our standpoint of view, for the leaders, you know, everything has to be crisp, you know. Everything has to be, we try to try to make us perfect. And um, starting off with the day, you know, getting over the corrections from the Alabama game, watching the film, then moving on to Arkansas. So Fournette had his worst outing of the season against Alabama, going up against the best rush defense in the nation, though. But can Fournette redeem himself tonight in Death Valley and get over that 100-yard hump again? Absolutely he can. He's got the talent. He's got the speed. He's got the hitching. He can do it. You know, guys, we talk about Heisman moments. He can have this Heisman moment tonight against Arkansas in Death Valley. You know, the great Heisman moment for LSU was Billy Cannon's run, and that came in a one-loss season where LSU was expected to make the national championship and didn't. So, absolutely, he can win the Heisman and have that moment that defines him and puts him over Derrick Henry and the other backs that we're talking about in the Heisman race. I'd be very surprised if Hornet did not go over 100 yards, and especially after coming off a loss. He's going to yeah. be motivated. The entire offensive line is going to be motivated. Um, so, yes, I do expect Fournette to rush over 100 yards. It seems like LSU can't win unless he rushes over 100 yards. Another well, huge question. Mitch, you kind of answered it, but is Heisman is Fournette out of the Heisman race after that performance in Tuscaloosa? A lot of people looking grim on the Heisman race for Fournette, but a lot of there's still a lot to play for for Leonard. Absolutely. You can't lose one game and knock him out of the Heisman. Is he no longer the favorite? Yes. But he's right behind Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, you know, is the flash in the pan right now. But Leonard's right behind him, and if Leonard just keeps doing what he does and gets over 100 yards in these next three games, I see no reason why he should not be the Heisman favorite. Leonard away with it. He's still leading the nation in yards, so I see no reason why he should. No, I think because you because of what you just mentioned, he still is the favorite, okay? He has 1,300 yards on the ground. Uh, he's leading the nation, 16 touchdowns. Let's keep in mind he's played one less game than most candidates because the McNeese State game was canceled. I think he's very much in the Heisman race still. So. Absolutely. Coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at the voice of Tiger Stadium, Dan Bournet. And after that, we'll have LSU baseball head coach Paul Maneri live here at the desk. Tiger TV game day show comes back. Stick with us. Welcome back to the Tiger TV game day show. Now on Tuesday, LSU head coach Les Miles celebrated his 62nd birthday at TJ Ribs on Wednesday. Um, fans were there on hand to help coach celebrate. Being another year older, he had a cake covered in green grass-like icing with hats on top, representing the four schools where Miles has played and coached. Coach, so happy birthday to LSU head happy coach Les Miles. 62 years young this years week. Young. Hopefully he can uh, continue that celebration tonight with a birthday present with a win over Arkansas. Yeah, that would be good. A few weeks back, our very own Mitch Rabelais was invited to join Tiger Stadium PA announcer Dan Bournet to take an inside look at the voice of Death Valley. <laughs> football game in Tiger Stadium in the last 30 years, you've heard the unmistakable voice of Dan Bournet. You call the plays after they run them. Then you have a timeout, then you do a spot. Bournet may be best known, however, for his iconic pregame weather cast, which actually evolved as an accident. I said chance of rain, and, I, and, and the word never came into my mouth, and I said never. And, and, it's rain. Rain. and bam, it just, it, there it is. So it becomes iconic. It's a special connection uh, uh, to the fans and to the university, and anyone who's asked to do it, um, should recognize that there is a tremendous amount of trust that's placed in him. We thank Mitch for getting that awesome package on Dan Bonet, a Tiger legend. Absolutely, you know, it was such an honor to be able to go in the PA booth, be, see with him in action, you know, his voice, if you've ever been to a Tiger football game, you know it. Such a nice guy, too, as well. And thank you, Dan, so much for opening yeah. that to us and giving us that access. Now, speaking of iconic voices affiliated with LSU Sports, Earlier this week, it was announced that the radio voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne, will not be calling this game. This is the second game he's missed in only 30 years behind the mic as the play-by-play -play voice of LSU football. He had 
heart surgery last week that sidelined him, but according to LSU spokesman Michael Bonnet, he'll be back behind the mic calling Tiger football as soon as possible. We wish the best of Jim. But coming up after the break, we have LSU baseball head coach Paul Maneri coming on the set live to talk some baseball. Don't go anywhere. The Tiger TV Game Day Show will be right back. Hello, welcome back to the Tiger TV Game Day Show. We are joined by a, a true Tiger legend, LSU baseball head coach, Paul Maneri. Coach, thank you so much for joining us here on the desk again this year. Awesome to have you. I got to talk about it before we get into anything sports related, but you went and flew with the U.S. Air Force <laughs> Thunderbirds, the fighter jets, the F-16s. I know it may be hard to put into words exactly, but just talk about that experience for you, what it was like. Craziest thing I've ever done, Johnny. Yeah. How's that sound? Oh, I'll tell you what, it was an awesome experience. Uh, uh, you, you do something like that, and then your admiration for the people that do that for a living for us, it just happened to be this week is Veterans uh, Day yeah. the, earlier this week. But your admiration for those people, for the things they do to put their life on the line daily for us, just goes through the roof. And the skill, the courage, the, the composure, the poise, the self-confidence, all the traits that you would see in a really outstanding athlete are clearly displayed in those pilots in their cockpit because I was so disoriented. I was just holding on for dear life. And this guy's <laughs> flying the plane like it's a walk in the park. It was a great experience for me. That's awesome. But back, back to baseball. Fall ball just concluding about a week ago. Um, just going to talk about what you saw that you liked from the team and what, what, what are you looking for in fall ball that can be applied to the season kicking off and it seems right around the corner. <laughs> it seems right around seems the corner. Just, but give me a little time yeah. now. Right? <laughs> February 19th is opening day. I'll tell you, the fall practice was great, Johnny. It's one of the best fall practices we've had in my tenure. Reminds me a little bit of the fall of 07, which was prior to the 08 season, which was my second year here. First year was not so stellar, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. We brought in a good recruiting class, and uh, you know we had to do a lot of teaching and rebuild the lineup. And that was kind of what we had to do this year, although last year was a pretty good year for us going to Omaha. But you know, this year, this fall, uh, we did a lot of teaching, a lot of new guys, a lot of uh, uh, jockeying for position among the team. And I saw a lot of good stuff. Now, fortunately, we have a very veteran pitching staff back, and that's going to be the cornerstone of our team, led by Alex Lang and Jared Poche, of yeah. course. Jake Fraley comes back as an everyday regular, and I think he's going to be a good leader for our team. But we're going to count on some young players. There's just no two ways about it. But the growth that I saw over the course of two months of this fall, if, if that's indicative of the pace of their growth in the spring, we're going to be just fine. Talking about... LSU football coming off a loss against Alabama last week. As a coach, when your team has a loss, say on a Friday night, they have a chance to rebound the next night, Saturday night. Yeah. So it's a quick turnaround. But for LSU, they have to wait a whole week, yeah. looking at social media, listening yeah. to the media, all that kind of stuff. How is it different for Les Miles trying to get keep his team focused to bounce back tonight as opposed to you knowing, hey, yeah. we have a chance tomorrow night and Sunday to bounce back quickly? Well, first of all, let's face it, Les has it figured out. I think they're 27-2 yeah. and two in games after uh, yeah. losses in his career here. That's remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I've always said this about coaches, that they're worth their, their, their paycheck in, when things aren't going well. Mm -hmm. Because it's so easy to motivate your players when everything's going great and they're, and they're winning and they're playing well and everybody's singing their praises. But when all of a sudden, you know, you get knocked down and now you worry about the players' confidence, you worry about their enthusiasm, their energy to play, that's when the coach has to perform his, his magic, so to speak. In Les's case, in some ways it's an advantage, in some ways it's a disadvantage that he has to wait a week to play. I know sometimes I wish I had a day or two, you know, after a tough loss. But, yeah. you know, what I do with our players is I just tell them we have a midnight rule. Mm -hmm. You know, midnight signifies the start of a new day. And so they have until midnight that day to celebrate the victory or to analyze the defeat. But when the clock strikes 12, they got to put it behind them. And they can't think about it. They can't talk about it. We, we don't allow them to talk about yesterday, today. Yeah. So everything is focused on it's a new day. If you won yesterday, it doesn't mean you're going to win today. And if you lost yesterday, you can't lose that enthusiasm and that self-confidence. A huge guy who's been for the Tigers. It's going to be pivotal tonight, Leonard Fournette. He's been the guy all year. Had a tough game last week against Alabama. Is he one of the most dominant athletes you've ever seen at this university in well, your time here? He's a great athlete, and he's a great kid. There's no question about it, but I think it also proved last week mm -hmm. that he can't do it alone. Absolutely. You have to get the blocking. Your defense has to do the job. It doesn't matter really how great you are, and that would be the case in any sport. You know, uh, uh, 
Simmons, obviously, is a tremendous basketball player, but he's going to need help and baseball. Alex Lang's a great pitcher, but if he doesn't have a great catcher to handle him and guys to make the plays behind him and, and players to, to score runs for him, you know, you waste that, that ability. And so the, it's incumbent upon every team to have a balanced team. Great to have superstars, believe me, and we've had our share of them in baseball with Bregman and Matuk and Nola and Gosman and uh, down the line. But they didn't do it alone, and they'll be the first to tell you that. You mentioned Ben Simmons and Alex Lang. What, what do you think it does for the image of LSU to have guys like Fournette, Simmons, and, and Lang, three of the best players in their sport collegiately here at LSU? Well, I think it speaks volumes about the magic of LSU. I mean, let's face it, uh, you know, we're, we're all proud of our school. And, uh, you know, LSU, in my opinion, represents excellence. And, you know, we all have high standards, the fans, the media, our administration, they all have high standards for all of our sports here, especially the three that you just mentioned. And when you sign up to come here, you accept that as part of the equation. You know, people ask me all the time, are you afraid of the expectations? Are, you know, is it overwhelming to you? Man, if you're afraid of it, you don't come to LSU. When I recruit players, I tell them point blank, listen, LSU is not for the pain of heart. Yeah. If, you're, if you're not tough and you don't want to shoot for greatness, then LSU is not the right place for you. Awesome. Coach, thank you so much for joining us again. It's a pleasure, pleasure to have Johnny. you. February 16th, the Tigers kick it off in Alex Fox against Cincinnati. Cincinnati, and congratulations on your graduation. Thank you so much. I appreciate my last show tonight. It so is a really little, little bit of to be here with I you. I appreciate that, Coach. Thank you so much. We'll be right back here on the Tiger TV Game Day Show. What we have here is full pork. What it is is a combination of several ingredients from Bailey. It's very simple. In honor of the impending doom of the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks, we cooked barbecue pork ribs. Baby back ribs. We took each slab, cut them in half, seasoned them. You'll eat them. All you'll have is the bones of the ribs. So all you'll have left at the end of today are the bones of the Razorbacks laying on the ground everywhere all over the field. Go Tigers. When we get down there, I mean, I get, tr I get moonshine as soon as I walk in here. That's the hospitality here. I get, a, you know, I get, uh, they gave me some pork and sandwiches and chips. It's been awesome. I mean, beer and, and it, you can't ask for much more just off a simple meeting someone at an LSU Bama game in Tuscaloosa to say, hey, come into our house, LSU Tigers, etc., and we'll treat you to a lot of stuff. So just being in that is awesome. It shows really the culture, the, the school atmosphere. Huge thanks to Tiger TV reporter Brandon Hilliard for going out this morning and catching up with some Ellison tailgaters. Tiger tailgating, nothing quite like it. But now looking to today's matchup against the Arkansas Razorbacks coming off a big win against Ole Miss last week. The Razorbacks are 5-4 and four in the season last week, spoiling the Ole Miss Rebel season in a thrilling 53-52 overtime win in Oxford. They're also having three tough SEC West games remaining to finish the season. Unranked Arkansas could be a team that they overlook while finishing on a tough November schedule. LSU knows that Arkansas is not a team that they can take lightly and will have to prepare for them just as hard as they would a top 10 team. Oh, you know, we, we know they're going to be a physical, physical team, but, uh, you know, they, it's just sort of something that just happened. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're just trying to focus on this year and just try to, you know, do what we do the best thing that we can, you know, to come out on the, on the other end this year. This is an Arkansas team that possesses the golden boot after last year's 17 yeah. nothing win in Fayetteville. And Taylor, you and I were at that game last Cole. year with Cole. Morgan Beard and Patrick Clay. It was very chilly, yeah. very cold, 32 degrees. But I think I realized from that atmosphere that this game against LSU is Arkansas Super Bowl. They want to win this game against LSU more than any game on their schedule. Can I mean, like, Arkansas, a team that gives LSU fits yearly, can the Razorbacks come in and knock off LSU? Today? Absolutely. They like playing upset, and I think their record doesn't indicate how good of a football team they are. I agree. The entire season, they've, they've been playing teams close. They played Alabama close. Last week's win against Ole Miss was just a culmination of what they were about to do every, every game this season. You know, you look at it, and you're absolutely right. This is their big rivalry. For them, this is their Alabama. That being said, where are they playing tonight, Taylor? The real Death Valley. Death Valley. So that being said, I don't think Arkansas can handle this atmosphere. I don't think they're going to be able to because this crowd is going to be loud, they're going to be enthusiastic, and they're going to be on national TV. I think they're mad over that loss last week against Alabama, so they're going to be ready. 
for Arkansas. The Tigers are mad about last week against Alabama, and I think that the Tigers are also mad about last year being embarrassed in Fayetteville. Saying to nothing, it's just an ugly game. I think the Tigers, if you're right, they should be motivated tonight in Tiger Stadium. But with that being said, I want to hear your predictions and keys to the game tonight. Mitch, I'll start with you. Keys to the game is LSU has got to mix it up on the offensive side of the ball. They cannot run it up and let this Arkansas guys up front stop Leonard Fournette. That being said, you have to go to the air with Brandon Harris. You've got as talented a core of receivers as anywhere in the nation, and you have to use them. You have to utilize multiple offensive attacks, and the line has to create gaps for Leonard Fournette to run, and you cannot let Brandon Allen tear this defense apart through the air. Brandon Allen's a very talented quarterback, you're right, but the key to me is the offensive line for LSU has to establish itself as a dominant offensive line. They have been for much of the season. They were flat out embarrassed at Alabama. Establish themselves, and that means Leonard Fournette's going to rush for over 100 yards. All right, Taylor, I need a score prediction from you real quick. Score prediction? Arkansas is really good, but I don't think they have two miracles in a row. LSU 31 to 24. You know, I'm Mitch, score prediction from how about you? You know, Arkansas coming off of the upset, they've got a really talented defense. Really talented offense that likes to spread the ball out, but you know what? Not so fast. Forget all this analysis. Forget all this schedule. I'm taking the Tigers. 21 to 14 in Death Valley. Tigers get the win. Going all the way, guys. You heard it there. 21 to 14. I'm going to go LSU, I think, through the air is the key tonight with Brandon Harris. I think Brandon Allen's going to throw and get yards. It's going to be a bend but don't break game for this LSU defense. I'm going to take the Tigers 34-24 tonight in Death Valley over Arkansas. That's all the time we have for our final Tiger TV final. game day show of the semester. The last show ever for me and Taylor. Mitchell has a couple more years. So thanks to our producer, Amanda Luskin, for doing a great job all season. Thank you to our advisor, Cindy Carter, for doing a great job organizing everything out here. Thank you to the Manship School for hosting our show here on the patio. For Mitch Rabelais, Taylor Kett, I'm John Lombardi signing off for the last time this season. Tiger fans, enjoy the game tonight. Hopefully LSU can win back the boot against Arkansas. We'll see you next fall.